Well, I think I think probably saying mm-hmm. identity would be. Let me say it this way: is um, we we struggle with believing that we can find joy and satisfaction and fulfillment in our relationship with Christ and the way He wants us to live, versus right. the way we I want to live. Right. Well, hey, CLF, thanks for joining us again for another episode of Equipped. And once again, we're going to talk about some gender ideology questions. Uh, And really, this stems off, yes, we we wanted to talk about this issue because it's just a kind of a hot topic in our culture. Um, But of course, we're also in Genesis and we're coming off of Genesis Genesis 1. And let me just read the word of God to you uh, for, for a moment. Genesis 1, 26 through 28 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. So God created them, man in his own image, and in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Right. So you have that that uh, reference to scripture right there. And that really stems this entire conversation. Right. So last time we met, we were going over just to give our folks a quick recap. We're really just discussing why are we even talking about the gender debate? why, why, when we, we know that this isn't important to our world, but why should it have an, an importance for the Christian? And in that, you know, I think we, I think we brought out that we do it because, yes, it's in the Word of God, but, but we want to care for these people. People are struggling, you know. We want to care for them. We want them to flourish. Um, and we know that God, having created us, He is uh, the best instruction and wisdom that we can find in order for us to flourish, right? Did you add any, anything to that? No, I mean, I think that it, it's important for us to realize that the, the reason God made things the way He made them is because God, who's the perfect being, who has great, the greatest, He's the source of all wisdom, determined this is what is best for humans. Mm-hmm. And this will make for their lives to be the most fulfilling. Mm-hmm. And so that's why he made us the way he made us, uh, the, the way he did. So I think we have to receive it from that. So I've got three questions here. And I think if we, if we do them in, in this order, it'll, it'll help us out here. Okay. So looking at um, really the, the, one of the biggest uh, conflicts then becomes, okay, this is what the Word of God says. But this is what I want to do, or this is what I would foresee as something that uh, that I would want to adhere to instead of God's word. So let's start here. The first question is, and it really comes into Romans 12. Why does God want us to be set apart from the world? Right now, I could reference Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Right. So in a nutshell, why are we called to be set apart from the world? So as Christians you're talking about, Mm -hmm. why are we to be called to be set apart from the world? And the the main reason is, is that when God, when we sin against God and the sin nature begin to take root and distort the image of God, redemption in Christ is what, the way that God is restoring us back to our original design. So the idea of not being conformed to the image of the world is the image of the world has not been conformed to the image of Christ, nor has it been restored by faith Mm -hmm. to the Savior to live like God intended us to live. So when when we're not conformed to this world, but we're conformed to the image of Christ, we are revealing to the world and we're acknowledging before God that this is the way God made us. and so inevitably you're going to see, you know, two main kingdoms at work in the world. You're going to see the kingdom of self and Satan, right. and you're going to see the kingdom of God in a sense, you know, the very general. Right. And when and you, you look, feel it, you feel that you can feel it all clash the time. Well, it's because time. of what, when you looked at the garden scene with Adam and Eve, when the, was the serpent tempted Eve, yeah. has God truly said, and then questioned God's authority, God's word, 
Eve then responded to taking the fruit because it looked good to her. Mm. And then the battleground is now taking place. It's what do I want? Kingdom of the world. Mm -hmm. What do I think is right versus what does God say is right? Kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so, so I think the reason we're called to be not to be to, to not be conformed to the image of the world, but be, to be transformed by the reading of our minds, is because that that's living in the kingdom of God, and re, and truly representing the kingdom of God while we're on the earth sure. living in this world. So then, why do people choose the kingdom of self over the kingdom of God so frequently? Well, it's right. very natural, and, 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 and I'm guilty as well. Yeah, well, it's very natural. We 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 breathe that we live in that kingdom as it's as easy to us as breathing, mm -hmm. um, and you know, ultimately. The whole scene of creation comes down to the question of, um, do, is what God has said best for creation, or is what I think is best for creation or for me? Sure. That becomes the, that's the battleground, yeah. right? And so the reason why it's so challenging is we, we're so inundated with self and our sinful self that we think what we want is what is going to make us Fully satisfied. The crazy right. thing is, virtually everything we desire, and I would even say sinfully desire, mm -hmm. God has a plan for us to, to find joy in that very thing in Him. So let's take let's take our sexual drive as an example. Sure. Right? God has made a plan for man and woman to be fully satisfied sexually inside of the covenant of marriage. Sure. Right? The difference is it's one man, one woman for one lifetime. And it's as, it's as free and as joyful and as, uh, as, um, as unlimited as, yeah. as one couple may want. Yeah, it's a right? gift. It's a gift. Right. right. But when that gift gets taken out of the boundaries of, of the giver, mm. it becomes chaotic and right. dangerous and selfish. Right. And you see that in the immoral culture that you may live in where everything now is about me. Right. And not it's just about, chaotic when it comes to relationships, to health, to, to, the, to, to mental fit. It could, that's what I'm saying. It could, be, it could be any right. area any area of your life yeah. right? that you look at and you think, I desire this, and you want to go after it selfishly. What you're going to find is there's, that's generally a substitute for what God mm. has really planned mm. for you. Sure. Right? The way I, I used to think, think of this when I was younger, when I was a younger pastor was, you know, there's such a thing as good sugar, you know, yeah. and then the world comes up with saccharin. Yeah. It's like, that, there's just no comparison, yeah. right? Yeah. But but some people have just bought into the idea of saccharin. When there's yeah. real sugar, they really yeah. taste way different, yeah. right? And that's yeah. kind of what I'd say is the kingdom of God is this beautiful sugary life <laughs> and, and the kingdom of self is saccharin. It just, you yeah. know, and it's going to give you cancer. I don't know <laughs> why. I don't know why, but all I got in my image was there, which is the fruit good, yes. fruit cocktail, not, not so, so good. good. That's exactly right. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Well, very good. Um, so then, what well, you brought up the uh, limitations and and just uh, sexual freedoms, yep. I would I would think, and, and you just the, the folks that are in my circles and the questions that I've had personally um, uh, from from folks asking is just this idea that if I adhere to the Word of God, if I do that, all I'm going to do is just find myself in chains. I'm not going to be able to do what I want. I'm not going to serve who I want to serve. I'm not going to be able, be able to go and do the things that I want to do. So here's the second question. Does obeying the commands of Scripture limit what freedoms you have? Well, and that, that question kind of touched on it. Yeah, that question comes from really a, a, a false narrative. The narrative is, if I do give myself to unlimited things, therefore I will be happy and mm. satisfied, mm. right? When the, the inevitable trait of the human life is, it is never enough. Mm. Right? So we're always wanting and desiring more. Yeah. That's just the way that we are as humans. But there's also another part of the question that's, that's a false narrative is, the things that God has commanded us to do and the freedom He's commanded us to live in is not satisfying enough. Yeah, right. Right? Where, whereas another way to look at it is, God has made us in such a way that to find our life and our joy in Him mm. creates for us more satisfaction than we know what to do with. Mm. It, it, again, you can take the narrative of marriage. When marriage is done with a man and a woman looking to Christ as their yeah. king and finding their joy in Christ yeah. and their satisfaction in Christ, what ends up happening is they then find ultimate joy and satisfaction in one another yeah, sure. in a way that they could never have ever believed right. or right. thought possible. Right. Because, because I know my wife intimately. She knows me intimately. Sure. 
there, there's only something that that relationship can produce. You can you never have that with a stranger. No, and there's a there's a transparency, there's uh -huh. a freedom, there's a joy, yep. there's the ability to to you. I mean, there's a uh, there's grace when there's right. failure that creates forgiveness in moments yep. that are that are amazing. And so you you look at all that and you say again, the world has this alternative that says, no, you want unlimited access to everything. Mm -hmm. Well, God says. No, I, I'm going to give you unlimited access to everything as you do things my way. Mm -hmm. And there are going to be some limitations, mm -hmm. but the limitations are for your benefit, for your good. Sure. So let's take the Adam and Eve scene. Sure. Don't eat of that one tree, right? Well, here's a question that I, I've been wrestling with recently was, would there have been a time in Adam and Eve's life when they could have eaten of the tree of life? Mm -hmm. And I think it would have been if they hadn't have eaten of the tree of If they haven't, yeah. Knowledge of good and evil. Sure. See? So, so my question is, no, God actually has the tree of life planned for you. Hmm. Just don't eat of that one tree. Right. Well, we say, we want the tree of life, right. so therefore we're going to eat the tree of the knowledge right. of good and evil. Because once again, it's never enough. And then we don't get the tree of life, sure. see? And that's what I'm saying. Which one would you rather have, the tree right. of life or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Right. Well, I mean, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I, I think that we, we fall prey to these false narratives all the time about what is gonna bring us satisfaction. I mean, all, all of us have had the moment in our life where we're, we're just selfishly sitting around the house, we're looking at our phone, we're disengaged from everybody. You get to the end of the day and you just feel like, God, what a boring day. Mm. Yeah, you just served yourself all day long, right? Sure. But we also had the other days where we've decided, oh, we get up in the morning, we serve our family, we care for people around us, we get involved in various activities with people, and we get to the end of the day, we go, something about that was satisfying. Oh, yeah. Why? Because we were living for others mm. and not ourselves. Yeah. That's how God made us. Sure. Let's talk about the third question for you today. Okay. Um, let me read this, Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in him. God considers us his workmanship, yeah. right? We've yeah. also said it often yeah. times here in uh, this Genesis series uh, that humanity is the crown jewel of creation, yeah. right? It's obvious. Everything that he created, uh, the birds, uh, the land, the beasts, uh, the vegetation, mm -hmm. all of it was for the purpose of providing, sustaining life yes. for us, for right? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a big takeaway for me, you know? So if God considers us the crown jewel and the workmanship, then when we when we come and confront that person um, to uh, uh, confront that person of their um, of their sexual sin um, maybe it's a transgender issue maybe it's a homosexuality issue maybe it's a heterosexual that's just uh, in depth with uh, with lust sure. right uh, trying to combat that right. um, but the with with all that said the act of love right confronting a person and it being an act of love how is telling someone that their sexual identity is wrong and needs to be changed an act of love? Well, I mean, I think ultimately, and this is where I think as Christians we just get, I, I, my, I just have personal pet peeves about it. I, mm -hmm. I feel like that we, and there's an element of it that, that seems righteous, that we care more for the truth than we do for the individual. Yeah. And that seems righteous, and it, you know, parts of it you go, yeah. and, I, and I was guilty of this as a young uh -huh preacher, you know, that my thought was, I'm just going to speak the truth, and, and they didn't figure it out his love, you know. Yeah, but you've disregarded the individual. But I've disregarded the individual, mm -hmm. or, or I have not, um, I have not truly had compassion on their soul, mm -hmm. right? And so I think first you have to begin with, am I, am I sharing the truth with them for their good mm -hmm. and for their benefit? Mm -hmm. Is this just simply to get the monkey off my back? You know, yeah, I've got sure. I've got a niece or a nephew that is living in an immoral lifestyle, and yeah. I just feel like I gotta gotta get confront them yeah, right. to get the monkey off our back. Is it just bugging me? Mm -hmm. I at that point I go, I don't know if that's compassion. Yeah, I think that's just self justification and potentially self righteousness. Right, or just 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 <clears throat> trying to check off something off the list. That's what well, I mean. I, yeah. I know this is just something that Christians are supposed to do. We got to do. Supposed it. to cr confront right. sin. I could really care less about this person, right. you know, or, or the sin that he's in there. That's I right. really might not even have a big issue with it, That's but right. but here you go. Right. You know. Vers versus having a genuine <clears throat> compassion for an individual and somebody somebody yeah. and or souls in general that you're willing to share the truth about what God's word says. Right. Now, I don't know if there is any objective standard by which you can judge if this was loving or not loving. Yeah. I can't I can't tell you yeah. 
I didn't think that was loving. Mm -hmm. I could maybe see it in your tone or I could understand your expressions or sure. whatever, yeah. but I, there's no, there's just no way to check yeah, that no off. formula. Yeah. Um, what you, what I may deem as unloving, others may say, wow, that was so compassionate and caring, <laughs> right? But you would know. Yeah. I would know if yeah. I'm sharing it, if I'm doing that. And I think that's important. Um, I think that we've got to be people that love people enough that we are willing to enter their world and we're willing to look them in the eye yeah. as a friend and say, I'm concerned for your soul and here's why. Yeah. Um, and you, you nailed a variety of, 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 you know, say sexual issues in our world. I think we get hung up on, there's a transgender issue that's going on in our yep. world today. Yep. And what we need to realize with that issue in particular, that has to do with human thriving. Yeah. And we say to ourselves, this individual is searching for something. Yeah. They, they really, they want to find identity in something. And we think as a believer and a Christian that the best thing for them is to find that identity in Christ. Sure. And Christ would then help them identify in Him and see their gender as God-given where they could find the most joy and they could thrive the most, right? Absolutely. But it's also true for the heterosexual adulterer. Yeah, right. Right? <clears throat> They're thinking satisfaction is in this other person. Yeah. I want them to find their identity so much in Christ and see that they are in desperate need of Christ that this will make them uh, thrive and be more joyful than that relationship yeah. ever could. Yeah, right. And so that's how it has to be seen. Again, we're adorning the gospel of the grace of God to reveal yeah. to them there is grace that is greater than all your sin. Mm. And there is grace that will help you thrive to be everything God wants you to yes. be and find the very joy that you're looking for. Yes. Right? You're the old song, you know, you're looking for love in all the wrong places. Yeah. And that's all that's happening. Right. And so it's our job as Christians then in love to just simply display and demonstrate and declare this good, glorious gospel mm -hmm. in, in such a way that even says, like, do you see that when we're living in our marriages and our genders, we I love being a man. Yeah. My wife loves being a woman. Right. Um, not because we're trying to sh tell you yep. we don't like your gender or we think that what you're doing in your trans thing is weird. We're saying to you, no, we love you. We want you to see from us yep. how much this, this is a joy to us. Right. Um, I think that's important. Yeah. Uh, and so, so yeah, so I, th I think that the challenge becomes um, as... Cri not, so I'll give you an example. This, this is from my own life. My, my wife would use this as an example. Jill always wanted to be a nurse. Mm. All right, it was one of her... Joys in life. She wanted to be a nurse. I she can see that. Super compassionate, yeah. very caring, very medically minded. Mm -hmm. And one day she said to me, she said, you know, Dave, when you preach, she said, I know now why God made me want to give me a heart for a nurse. And I said, really? Why is that? And she said, when you preach, she said, um, you swing the sword of the word of God like a broad sword. <laughs> and many times I have to come behind and clean up the mess. <laughs> and here's what she said next. What if you started using the sword like a scalpel. <laughs> yes. Right. Hmm. Thank you. Help me. Little, little, little more intentional. Um, yeah. A little, 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 little more intentional. A little more delicate. A little more delicate. A <laughs> little more caring. Right. right. Uh, a little more understanding of exactly precisely what is the wound that needs to be healed yeah. or what is the, the sickness that's there. Yeah. Um, that was helpful. Hmm. There are moments when a broadsword needs to be swung in a battle. Yeah, sure. But there are moments in a medical field, you yeah. know, you bring a broadsword to a medical tent, yeah, right. it doesn't belong there. Right. And so I think, it, I think we have to think about it in that way. We've got to think about graciously giving the Word of God yeah. with gentleness yes. while, and understanding. Yeah. Um, I want to know. I want to know why an individual thinks the way they think. I want to know why, why does this young man think that having sex with his girlfriend sure. Is, is the thing he needs to be doing. Sure. What, what is it in him? Now, sure. It's sin, right, right. but I also want to help him see you're, you're looking for something that only Christ can provide. Right, but, and what you're doing there, you're, you're, not just, you're not just understanding their situation better, but you're understanding the person, yes. right? So now we're right back to where we started. Right. This absolutely has to be rooted in the care for that individual. That's exactly right. Yeah, very good. Now, you also brought up a, a thing about um, I mean, here we're, we're talking about gender ideologies, we're talking about transgender issues and that kind of thing. But at the, at the bottom line, uh, I mean, for, for one, I think we all deal with some form of sexual sin, 
right? Absolutely. I think that's common in just who we are, right? That said, you kind of alluded to this is this is ultimately an, a problem of of image of self, right? Or yes. or, or an, I, an, an, a problem of your identity, yes. right? Do you find your <clears throat> your identity in just you or some other thing, or do you find it in Christ, right? Can you touch on that a little bit? Well, and I think I think probably saying mm -hmm. identity would be. Let me say it this way: is um, we we struggle with believing that we can find joy and satisfaction and fulfillment in our relationship with Christ and the way he wants us to live versus right. the way we I want to live. Right. And so we look at, right. you know, we want to be ruler. We, yeah, we want to do we want to look at porn or we want to uh, engage in this activity. We need drugs or we need to self-medicate. And and I think my what I find often is those issues when I say they're identity issues, what I mean by that is that it's deter it's revealing who somebody is worshiping. They're either worshiping God right. or they're worshiping themselves. And and when they're worshiping themselves, it's going to be expressed in a variety of different ways. Right. When they're worshiping God, it's going to be expressed in a variety of different right. ways. That's why I say in marriages, I tell people all the time, don't don't make your spouse your idol, or your yep. God. Yep. God is your king. Submit to God and it's going to create the way you sp treat and speak to your spouse, right? right? It's the same way in life. So, yes, I spend a lot of time with people on what do they value? What are they worshiping? What is it that is in their heart that's leading them? That? And I want to know the whys. Why do you feel that that's going to get you there? I even ask young men a lot. Okay, so you feel like that uh, being lazy is going to get you here. Mm. Well, how's it working out for you? Yeah. And they go, well, not very well. Yeah. Okay, great. So God has another plan that that looks differently. Mm -hmm. Um what if, what if we submitted ourselves to Christ, believed in His forgiveness of sin, His empowerment of the Spirit, and we wanted to do that? Yep. Let's give that a shot. Let's, let's go after that. Right. And uh, because there's a better plan mm. for you. Yes. Well, th thank you very much, Dave. I, I, th I think that's really helpful, especially coming, uh, looking at these three questions. Um, and I just want to leave off on, on just this note and just from, uh, from Holy Scripture, because <clears throat> this is... This is the gift. We talked about us being humanity being the, the crown jewel. We talked about how, uh, how we are the workmanship. And we're not only just a workmanship, but 1 Peter 2, 2, 9 says this, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into that marvelous light. And I just like to stop there just because, uh, you know, even if, if anybody out there is watching or struggling with mm -hmm. any of this sexual temptation, any of this sin or any sin for that matter, and you don't know who Jesus is, uh, we would hope that you uh, that you would see that there is a God who loves you, yeah. that there is a Savior and his yeah, name man. is Christ. And he died on the cross to give mm -hmm. you this eternal gift to be back into a harmonious relationship with God. And uh, that right there, he's calling you to a royal priesthood if that doesn't sound like something yeah. that anybody would want uh, i don't know what would mm, uh and uh yeah he's calling you out of darkness into a marvel marvelous light so uh if that's out you uh, if that's you out there just know uh we love you god loves you that's more important mm -hmm. and uh that uh any of these questions we hope it's helpful to you mm -hmm. and that uh, we do we try to speak these things in love so mm -hmm. See you left. we hope you're enjoying these videos that we're putting out uh here's what our hope is we really do want to equip you we want to serve you and help you understand how you can have answers for your world and the different things that you see going on in your world. We also just want to care for your soul. We just want to serve you in a way that helps you love Jesus more. And then most certainly we want to help you as you get out and share the gospel with your friends and you love on people around you that you can have biblical answers. And so thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.